Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the S Team Podcast. I'm Jack Melton and joining me this week, as usual, as ever, it's Mikey Pop World VIP Keating. <laughs> Come on, can you just leave my private extensions out of this? Yeah, mate. I'm good. I'm just really I, I, it's 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 quarter to two now. <clears throat> um and it's quite a funny thing because I got a phone call from Mikey before saying yeah, I'll be on my way in a bit. I've just had to sort some things out. No, I was now, more... Mikey's thing is default excuse of saying, oh, I've just had to <laughs> sort some things out. He comes in and my mum asks him how he's been and everything. He goes, yeah, I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how was your sleep, Mike? Which fun was it? Go to Betty Boo Boo's. I did go to Betty Boo Boo's, yeah. Mike, to me, Mikey's still a Liverpool town virgin because he still hasn't been to the proper club yet. <laughs> You know, he's, he's yet to go to the Cray. You know, he's he goes to Pop World because he's a sad bastard. <laughs> no, I enjoy going to Pop World, but I probably won't Why? go again. Because the music is very good. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, because he's playing his favourite tracks, such as YMCA, In the yeah. Navy. Yeah. Bloody hell. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> Isn't that? Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, he's not denying that one, though, is he? Because I'm eating me, boy. Yeah, people, Mikey's been, um... Mikey went out on the town last night. Fucking shit, it was. <laughs> it's your fault, you go with the wrong people. <laughs> you go with the wrong people and you go to the wrong places. You wouldn't fucking go. <laughs> I wouldn't go because I've exhausted my capabilities of even going to town because it just... It's just tedious to me now. It's not fun anymore. Wow. I went a lot during the first semester at uni, and then after that, I was just like, I can't be bothered going. Well, I just didn't enjoy it anymore. I don't want to do something I don't enjoy. You never know. I could always go with Matty. Matty's fun. Matty, you'll have fun with Matty. Oh, oh like. I've noticed the fun <laughs> I've had with Matty. When alcohol's involved and tense. Right, so, oh, sorry, what was that? Lord Sandwich. <laughs> I've, I've witnessed Matthew's wrath when you put him in a tent with alcohol and I'm on the it other side of the garden. It's like every time we've experienced Matty being drunk he's always fell over something. It's like it, on, on your night when you went to Maggie's party he fell over into a tent. No, when he was, he was in with, the tent he was in and his, he fell out the tent. Out of the tent. But not through the entrance or the exit. No, through the side of the tent <laughs> and took the tent near you with him. I laughed. And then when he went out with us and we were up on our sort of like party night thing, um, he fell over on the stage because that was the funniest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. And he was so drunk he couldn't even walk straight. <laughs> Sounds like Mikey. It is. Obviously, Mikey's being very careful when he's eating the sandwich because if one thing, if I find one thing when I go into bed tonight and it's a crumb, you're getting the hatchet buried in the side of your head. <laughs> Could it not be in my good eye? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, there's some, there's some interesting stories this week. Mm-hmm. Um, I've decided to avoid politics like the plague for the rest of this month. What can I just say something? And, um,. Mikey wants to say something. So well, I'm politics. <sighs> on Friday, it was 50 years. Ah, of course. Since the burial of... We, I, watched that, I watched that documentary. It was brilliant. I am. I, I, um, I didn't know it was a documentary. I watched that on the news, though. Yeah, but live. Yeah, yeah. I watched the documentary, and you were telling mm. all about how the nation coped and how he did sort of things in the background. It was an amazing story to watch. To watch how we how we led everyone through. I mean, what was it? Nineteen sixty-five. But yeah. We'll fight them on the beaches. We'll fight them in the sea. We'll fight them in the. Uh... We'll fight them in Pop World Nightclub. We'll fight them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's like Winston Chase, John Hitler having a dance off. <laughs> but um, it's fifty. Obviously, Mikey's just. It's funny because one anniversary passed this um, week. Obviously, with Winston Churchill, another. Anniversary, a hundred years anniversary since the birth of a legend, actually. Um, and everyone, obviously, if you're a football lover, everyone knows the name of Stanley Matthews. 
been a hundred years since he um, since he was he was born. fired out yeah. <laughs> and, um, Two hundred yards. <laughs> but I mean, Stanley, Stanley Matthews was such a he played seven hundred games for Stoke and Blackpool, played fifty four times for England and retired from professional football the same year as Winston Churchill died, aged fifty. <laughs> he kept playing football till he was fifty. I can't remember the oldest professional player, football player of all time, but I do know the oldest F one driver of all time was fifty four. Ever to take part in a race. I mean, that's a pretty impressive age for 50 years old. Still playing football. In the 60s when... Football had really just started to turn its screw. He retired a year before the World Cup, which is... You know, poignant, really. Mm. Because he was part of an England team that was... Recognised worldwide that was brilliant. And yet he was still part of the team that got... Knocked out, well, got beaten by America in the 1950 World Cup, which was a big thing, really, to be honest. The Americans beating us. It's the only time the Americans have ever beaten us at football. Well, that's what I like to believe, anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Friendly Stone Count. He was. Do you know the amazing thing is, is that mm. he was knighted while he was still playing football? <laughs> while he was still playing. I mean, it kind of says a lot, really. I mean, he. I mean, obviously, during the war. He um he was he served with the RAF yeah. and he was stationed outside Blackpool <laughs> and he joined Blackpool Football Club in nineteen forty seven for a fee of eleven grand and a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Must have been some good whiskey that. Hmm. But um he won the he won the FA Cup finally in nineteen fifty three in a match that came to be known as the Matthews final. He had even no Matt Stanley Matthews only scored one goal and I can't remember the guy who scored a hat trick but <laughs> I've actually scored a hat trick in an FA Cup final and yet Stanley Matthews gets all the credit for it why did he get all the credit for it because a lot of people he'd had so many chances at the FA Cup before and hadn't won it and he got right to that point and he'd played well that match he'd scored himself and he'd set up a couple of goals but it was more for the occasion the fact that he'd finally won it but a lot of people think back and go it's the Matthews Cup because of Stanley Matthews, not because of the guy who scored the hat trick. <laughs> but the guy who fucking scored the hat trick sitting there now, though, what a fucking bad. <laughs> but yeah. And um, yeah, I think everyone. And Sir Stanley died in 2000 at the age of 85, and well, I mean. Yeah, I would have been on. Yeah, he would. Don't, um, oh my god! <laughs> I'm not listening. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Mike here. I'm not listening. <laughs> it's not fair. I hung over Mike can't use his brain. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mikey Keaton's Still Hungover. <laughs> you know, like Harold and Kumar's adventure. You'll also be like, Mikey Keaton's big day out. <laughs> or Mikey and Matty's fuck up day. <laughs> M- Matty and Mikey go camping. <laughs> You're With some pre- surprising <laughs> results. <laughs> it'd be like, it'd be like oh, if you ever did a remake of Police Squad. It'd be like there'd be like a t- post- posters of you two trying to look cool and everything. It'd be like, it'd be like, you know those police things. Do not cross. It'd be like police, <laughs> police zone. Donut cross. <laughs> You're just like a pack of donuts just sat on the side. Yeah. It's like it's not it's too bad. Picking up like a caramel donut at the back on <laughs> and then you just like shaking your head like. Uh, with the badge commissioner on there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that because he'll be going, Ooh, Goffin references! Ooh. But um, Matty Morris has actually been in the news this week. Like our Matty Morris? Yeah, Ma- yeah Matty Boris Johnson Morris has been in the news. <laughs> Boris jo- He looks like Boris Johnson. He looks nothing like Boris Johnson. He acts like Boris Johnson. Dopey, yes, okay. Um, <laughs> um, I actually... I was- <laughs> You know when someone says something in the news and you, you've got to take a step back and go, he just said that, he just said that, he really just said that. Yeah, Boris Johnson's just had one of those moments. Like every day then? Yep. Oh, okay. Boris Johnson has described men who join religious extreme extremist groups, such as Islamic State, mm. as losers who are likely to be users of pornography. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit there and you're just like, 
it, he, he told he told the newspaper that those turns of violence had low self esteem and were unsuccessful with women. So um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Thanks, why Boris. we love Boris, people. <laughs> he might be Tory, but he's the only one we like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just put it to you straight there, Boris. <laughs> just, I think, to be fair, Boris Johnson does not care which parties he's with as long as he's the mayor of London. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Asked about his remarks later on, Boris Johnson said he did not believe anyone could seriously contest a word I said. <laughs> it was basically like, I don't really care. Go home. <laughs> Go home. Stop wasting my time. You, can, you wouldn't. You wouldn't see any other Tory Tory party leader or of any constituency do something like Boris. One thing you gotta love about Boris, he does not take any crap. He doesn't care, does he? It, it literally, you could turn around to him and go, "You're gay. You're stupid." And he go, "You can talk, can't you?" <laughs> really, another politician will come up with like some educated excuse on. How this and that and the other, Boris just really doesn't give one. He's like, shut up, mate, and knock it off. <laughs> did, you, did you sleep with that woman? Yeah. And a friend. <laughs> uh, and everyone's like, what friend? Those two over there. Wait, you said friend. Oh, I meant plural. <laughs> <laughs> There's four friends. Do you know what I mean? We had Silvio Berlusconi <laughs> in for one of his bunga bunga parties. <laughs> it's not half good, though. <laughs> But um, he's a not body body parties now. <laughs> I, did, I love the fact that you know there's the fact that one he wants to go and he want he would like to be prime minister of this country. Would I, I, mind what, it? I'd rather I wouldn't have mind Boris. it. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind that. But <laughs> same time as that, because of um, a birth regularity that he's got it with him, <laughs> a birth reg- because of some he can actually qualify to be uh, president of the United States. <laughs> You joke. No, that's honestly true. He's got a. Re- I think there's something. In, I think there's a regularity somewhere in his birth where he is actually successfully allowed to apply for presidential election in America. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> you know what? If I lived in America, right, and it's here that one day, Boris Johnson, who has <laughs> Obama, I'd go, Boris Johnson, even if I didn't agree with him. Boris Johnson. Well, it wouldn't be Obama anyway, because Obama's not allowed to serve another term. He's finished for his eight years. No, but I'm just saying, if it was to come to... Mm. That's what I'm for. Um, um, I've got another story here, which I managed to label called Fuck Off. Um, Nokia threatens a London startup. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, they've probably violated their word, you know, like a phrase or a logo or maybe a phone brand or something like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a phone design. No. Nokia has threatened legal action against a small UK technology firm over its use of the word here. As in, here I am, or um, here, here is go. the bakeries, or here is my fist going up Nokia's ass for saying such a stupid thing. Why, would you, why has it got to the point now where people have started suing other people for using different words? Here is a genuine word that's voiced in the dictionary, and I'm sat there and I think... I don't care. <laughs> you should not allow to sue other companies just because they're using a le- a word. Microsoft. I'd understand if it's a word that they've used or it's a, a word that um you it know they've copyrighted. created it. But I mean, Nokia have gone out and said, so far we've invested twelve million dollars, which is eight million uh pounds in promoting a tier brand. Let's just be fair here. Nokia has spent eight million pounds. Eight million pounds is a dip in the ocean to Nokia. And that's a fact, isn't it? That's a fact. Uh, Nokia is a multi-million company that turns out not so good phones anymore for a good price, and people like them. But and you sit there and you think you're moaning at a little company mm-hmm. called Lo- Lowdown App, and it's and basically this is what the app does. It's a digital personal assistant that allows users to tell friends that they have arrived at a location by pressing the here button. I don't think this little company, Lowdown App, have done anything wrong. It's a word to go, I'm here. I'm here. That's a great thing, isn't that? In fact, that's a genius app. Because mm-hmm. you can tell your mates, you can go, yeah, I'm here now. Instead of having to send a text or having to do anything rubbish like that. Yeah, there's a problem with that. Say if you're going to meet a girl and you've got on that, 
mm. you can press down the hair app and you can't even be anywhere near it. No, it it, it, co- it it comes up when you've arrived there saying you can ah. press this button. That's oh, the I smart thing th- about saying. I would think that would be class because I'd just go like that outside. Yeah, and I'd be a chop. Yeah, and I'd still be at my. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think it's really sad the fact that a big company like that is having to moan and sue a company over a word. And I think, quite frankly, that big companies shouldn't be. I've always hated big companies that go and sue little companies anyway because I just think that's bullying. You've got all that money in the world and they're. I could understand if they're ripping off one of your products or they're ripping you off in some shape or form. Mm. You're using the word. I'd love to see. I would love to see how much they're uh, suing them for. It doesn't say, but it said, you've been given a deadline of the 10th of February to rebrand the here function for the apps. I reckon they should just stand up to it and just carry on. I would take it to court and I guarantee the courts would go, it's just a word. It's just a word? I mean, obviously, people with common sense. I mean, obvi- Nokia knowing they would probably find some mangled up way of getting them to change it in some way. I get, I get, I bet, I bet they would. Because mm. I know, you know, it's like singers nowadays who trademark lyrics from their songs and stuff like that. I can understand that because you know it's a song that they've done, mm. and you know they cre- created their lyrics for it, and it's different. But if All it the comes tunes, to yeah, All with the tunes a, itself. Well, it, no, used, it what, used to be that way. It's not anymore. But I think it's really harsh. I really do think it's really harsh. Mm. And, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's stupid, but I'm going to move it on. Now, people, as we know, 2017's two years away. <laughs> well, hang on. No, if, if you listen to this in 2017, it, um, it's now. Um <laughs> This is a this is a great piece of news actually for uh-huh. the motorsport world because back in the nineties, Toyota were one of the biggest WRC manufacturers of all time. Are you fucking joking? Well, they had the Celica. They Toyota had the, are coming back. Celica are coming back. Do you mind like interrupting my history lesson? Sorry. Bellend. <laughs> Belston. No, that's your word. I'm not using your word. I'm using my word. That you. Well, as I was saying, Toyota had won. I've just got to go through it now, haven't I? Because you just cut in. Okay. But um, you still got a lot to learn, haven't you? <laughs> but basically, you know, they won three drivers' type. Well, they won a lot of titles, you know. I mean, they won with Carlos Sainz, they won with Didier Auriel, you know. They won. And Yuha Kankinen. Cracking legendary drivers, especially Kankinen, four time world champion. And. You know, they, 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 they left the WRC after competing in 1999. They went to F1, didn't do too badly. They competed for nine, no, six years, 2002 to 2009, seven years to 2009. I forgot about the 2009 year. Um, 2009 was probably their most competitive year, which is kind of insane, a lot really. And then they left because of the economic downturn. Six years later, which is about time Toyota finally announced that they're coming back with the TMG group which is their uh, motorsport division in Cologne you don't know where Cologne is get a, get an atlas <laughs> where is it you know where it is come on Cologne <laughs> Mikey doesn't know where it is <laughs> America no it's in Germany mm. but, I don't um, like it mm. that's, where, that's where it's always been right. and uh, they're coming back with the Yaris they showed some promotional livery oh my God. of the Aris. It looks badass, actually, to be honest. But a Yaris... Why not the Corolla? You can't... Br- Does the Corolla doesn't exist anymore? Doesn't it? No. <laughs> oh, that's a great little car. The Corolla hasn't existed since the late, early noughties, <laughs> in fact. No, the Corolla. The, the Corolla Verso and stuff. I mean the proper Corolla. Oh, proper, proper Corolla, yeah. Obviously, there's the Corolla Verso, but... The Corolla 24 400. Actually, I think if I can just load a picture of it, here, here it is actually. That's the Yaris that they're bringing into the sport. I've, that's just a promotional livery. It's not going to look exactly like that when it comes out. Oh. But that's what it looks like to begin with. That is nice. <laughs> it looks I badass, actually, doesn't it? I like to see the badge. Yeah. The black badge and stuff. Um, <laughs> I, I like. You see where they've got the door pillars? Yeah. See like the gap between. 
the corner. Yeah, I see. So it's boring. If they start, they made that black a bit more. So it well, it's a promotion. Faded. It's just a promotional. No, livery, but I'd say in my personal opinion, if they had that, f- they, they fade it in. Mm. Right. I, I mean, a bit more black. Talk about look mint. I'd rather them come back with a livery like this, like their old Corolla livery. That was the best livery of all time. In fact, there's my another Salika here that I've been making. It doesn't look great because it's not finished, but I mean. If they came back with a livery like that, it looks fun. It looks happy and vibrant. It does. You ever thought? And every time, it? every time I look at that Carol, the only image I ever get in the back of my mind is when Carlos Sainz, who was so close to winning a third title, retired from the finish line, three hundred meters away from the finish, and gave Tommy Mackinnon the win in the Evo for that year's championship. That's the image I always get from that. But I reckon it'll be great. Five manufacturers in WRC. It's getting back to the old days. You got Ford in some form, Citroen, Volkswagen, Hyundai, Toyota. There's even rumours of another team pop- possibly coming in. No one said what it is yet, but great. Lots of Mini. Well, they had Mini, didn't they? So it's five. The problem with yeah. Mini is be- is because turned by BMW. So. No, it's because it was Pro Drive run, and Pro Drive couldn't keep the sport, the team in the sport for long enough because they couldn't get the sponsors. Mini still is still there. I know some of the privateer teams use Mini Cooper S two thousands, but they're in like the lower formula of WRC. Or WRC two. Thank you. And um, stuff like that, but no, they've not been seen on the the WRC stage for about two years, three years now. Hmm. But um, yeah, that's a good piece of news. I'm happy with that. The fact that Toyota are coming back. And we've got some more news, obviously. Today, F1 started testing. And I could probably... I'm going to do a quick rundown of all the drivers that are in the sport this year. Mercedes, you've got Mikey's favourite, Hamilton and Rosberg. Um, then you've got in the Red Bull, Daniel Ricciardo and Danny Kvyat. Williams, obviously they got Massa and Bottas again for this year. Ferrari, four times world champion. Sebastian Vettel joins them. Um, running quite well for Ari at the minute in the in the testing, but as everyone knows, testing doesn't mean sod all until we get to March. The one, the only, keep it back. Who was crap last year, and if he's crap again this year, then he's not really the best of drivers, to be honest. Okay. I hate to admit that, and I don't like saying that because I like Kimmy, but last year he was poor. He was poor. He did better with the Lotus the year before. He, he was poor last season, which was a surprise. McLaren probably got the strongest partnership of the whole grid you've got Fernando Alonso and Jensen Jensen Button in the McLaren the McLaren Honda has been running well today and it's not been running sorry, consecutive sorry. laps much sorry, sorry. can you just repeat that obviously Mikey sits there and goes <laughs> the Honda engine so everything it's I a, it's so good though VTEC it's yeah. not got VTEC in it that's what I know it's like VTEC is a road going design it's got nothing Wrong. to do with VTEC is not part of F1. End the story. Shut your mouth. It's part of motorsports, though. It's part of motorsport, but it's not part of F1. So do you have VTEC K1? Shut up. A few bikes. <sighs> so carry on. <laughs> Basically, Alonso's been out today in the, in the McLaren running initial testing runs and just getting the car. Hasn't broken down yet. Sounds a bit raspy, but obviously, Honda going through the same process that everyone else went through last year so it's going to take them time um, Force India they've got Hulkenberg and Perez like to see how they get on with their new car this year Lotus this is how good Lotus are their um, their car hasn't even arrived at her F yet so <laughs> yay <Wow. laughs> um, they were doing they did promotional videos yesterday and then it was it's still not arrived at the track yet it's being fl- flown over <laughs> Well, it's obviously it's in Spain now, but where's the track? Jerez. It's in Spain. Yeah, but how far is the nearest airport to? Take? Not far. Yet they can't far. even manage to drop the fucking thing off. Well, you got to remember, you got to have a special cargo load to fly it over. And everything. Yeah. 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 You could have done. And this. then they've got to set the whole thing yeah. up when they get there. Could, could have done this Friday. Could, could have got it all sorted first day. Like. Or you could fix the car before you go to her F first and then send it over rather than having a broken car going around testing and losing vital track day time. Having to fix thing when you're supposed to be testing. See, that's why Mikey couldn't be an F1 manager and owner because he would just go, oh, I've only got three wheels, send it out. 
<laughs> um, I'm forgetting someone else, I think. Because I think I've only mentioned seven teams. Oh, yeah, of course. Toro Rosso, they've got the youngest driver partnership we've ever seen in F1. You've got Max Verstappen, who's 17 years old, and Carlos Sainz Jr., not as good as his dad. Um, basically, their combined age, age is 37. <laughs> That's how young that team is. Yeah. Um... I want to see Max Verstappen do well, but at the same time, I'd love to see him fail because it's just it goes to prove that you need to have experience in F one rather than being a little seventeen year old munchkin who's managed to get a car seat before one of us has. So it's annoying to know the fact that there's a guy who hasn't got a proper driver's license out there has actually got an F one seat in front of me. <laughs> me, I can understand. You, yeah, you, I can understand. <laughs> And the other team people as well that are in this in uh, at testing at the minute, Sauber, who came up with their IKEA livery, basically this week. Um, they've got Marcus Ericsson who drove for Caterham last year, and Felipe Nasser. That's gonna be, th- this. Their car's been running well. Their car's been running solid. It's not shown pace because they never do it testing. We'll only find out in the final test before Australia what the cars are really like, but. It's nice to know that the Sauber's everyone's gone out there, and they haven't really. They have, no one stopped on track. So, I mean, Eric's had spun, but he, he kept going. No one stopped on track, so it's a good sign this year. Not like last year, when everyone thought that the cars wouldn't even make it to the flipping grid <laughs> in Australia last year. So it's going to be going to be a good in- year. I'm interested to see what the Honda's going to be like with the McLaren engine because everyone knows McLaren Honda. Um, better and better. I'm saying good and great. Yeah, McLaren are great, Honda are good. That, that's what I'm trying yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, yeah, I don't want you trying to flip it so you got little <laughs> Honda undertones in there. <laughs> Honda, I, I, Honda has got a complete separate division for F1 compared to their main group. It's got Honda on But it's still Honda, I'm not saying it's not Honda. It's just like... I never class Honda in f- motorsport as the same as Honda as a manufacturer because Honda as a manufacturer are a bit more, I'd say, reserved. Mm. Whereas Honda in motorsport, they had the NSX when that flew round back in the noughties. Those Mugen NSXs were so quick. The Acuras, the because that's the basically American subsidiary of Honda. If I could go like that on your hair right now, I would. <laughs> well done, Mikey. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Civics, the Type R's. Ooh. I still think they're a bit reserved. The EP3, right. It was I am Jeremy Clarkson actually said he loved the EP3. When the FN2, you know the one that looks like a spaceship, came out. Uh, I struggle to remember with Hondas. Basically, do you know the one that the gear sticks like up here? Mm. Next, that's the EP3. The one after it, which is down, back in the normal position. That's the FN2. I'll show you a picture of it in a bit. Um, but basically, he didn't like it whatsoever. It was, I think it was like five. Um, it was heavier, and it had one extra horsepower, and it was it was slower. It was, he, he, the thing he loves about the EP3 is the wheel would kick out it would go freewheel why are we talking about Honda because we were talking about Honda in F1 back. and motorsports yeah so I'm trying but I was just, just so anyway I'm going to move it on to weird American news <laughs> <laughs> sake I'll fix it no just leave it okay. just just leave it okay flipping American honest Sorry, love. So, from your homeland, um, <laughs> there's a 19-year-old, 19-year-old woman has been arrested after making an X-rated porn style video in a university library. Now, oh, I heard about this one last night. Now I know we were I know. actually talking about this with Mackie. <laughs> now, this 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 girl named Kendra Sunderland was charged with public indecency after the film emerged online. First things first. Um, she could be jailed for up to a year and fined if found guilty. I think it's really harsh if she gets jailed, to be honest with you. Why? Because, you know... What do you think of the poor been... librarian? The I'm poor bastards... Sh- are, no, the poor bastards only walk around doing his butt 
job. Put the book it's up. a university library, not a library. Still. Have you ever been to a university library? No. Do you know what they do in university libraries? No. They pretend they're real librarians, but really they just sit around and do nothing unless you ask them to do something. This was so quiet. anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> I think it's harsh yeah. to, to be the fact that she gets jailed for up to a year and fined if she's found girls. Be I, can, I can understand the fine. I can understand that. But she didn't upload the video. This was uploaded by some X-rated website that I haven't got a clue of and you know sure right, you know I, I know people who've been on webcams and they've done stuff like that before and you know and you think and you feel sorry for them because they get uploaded onto the internet and you're like well you know in one way it's your own fault but this girl's been now facing a flipping a prison sentence because of something that someone else uploaded and I was just like it's a bit it's a bit harsh in my eyes. If it's an X-rated porn star it is company, it's not yeah. an X-rated porn star company. She was a student at the university. Well, I'm talking about the company she's done the thing with. No, she didn't. She was on a webcam with someone. Someone recorded it, yeah. and then sent it off somewhere. Oh, that's why I think it's really harsh. Ah, oh, fair enough. I thought you were talking about the company. I was assuming. No, 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 no. You... She could get a year to. I think it's really. I mean. I was thinking about it and I thought with our UK rules we probably in, in the li- if something like that was happening in the library nothing would really happen they'd probably get banned from the library but that's about it maybe get a warning because obviously you can't you can't you can't have sex in the public place I f- I, 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 the rules are a bit sketchy but I, for some reason if you have let's say it in a park and you get caught then you could face a fine and some and like something goes on your rap sheet or report sheet whatever it's called and then if you do it let's say in a public area let's say a cinema somewhere you get called you could face a fine or something and then a prison sentence I mean I feel sorry for her because she's really fit <laughs> is she? to be f- I'm going to be brutally honest now to be honest with you I seen this video Way before this became even popular, uh-huh. I seen this video uh-huh. for like two months so, before this. Wow. The OK came. It, it's so you'd like... Am I the only one here who's actually going to admit to the fact that you know I went round and this video got sent sent to me, and I thought I watched this video because someone sent it to me, and the thumbnail I got sent was like she's nice. <laughs> I sent the video, I watched it, it was like. And you can see, literally, students walking past and not seeing anything. What's this doing? I'm not. I swear down. If I could find the file, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd show you it. Obviously not on this. I'd send you it in a in an enclosed envelope by a secret <laughs> bank service, and then you'd have to go through deadlock seals to send it through. In a, but I like would. I scanners. I would. I would send you it, but I can't find it. I've seen. I seen this video two months ago, and I thought she's amazing. And now she gets stuff in it, and I kind of feel sorry for her in that sense. Life's harsh, Bill. You've got to get on with it. You I know. Them sort of choices. What the fuck do you expect? But what would you? I mean, so imagine, if, imagine if you got. Imagine if you got arrested for something like that. Because <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised you haven't. To be honest with you. But. <laughs> oh my god! Don't make me laugh. <laughs> oh my god! I'm a virgin. You're saying a mouse again. Yeah. What happens if you were on work? Well, no, she's, she's, oh, she, it's just, what? I don't put, go to educational solo, based it's environments. It's a solo video. It's just her by herself. Yeah. Yeah. This is why I'm trying to explain That's to you. That's why I said if you did the same thing. I wouldn't do the same thing, though. Got mm. morals. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Let's get roll over. I've got morals. <laughs> yeah. This is coming from the man who's wearing an American hat backwards. It's not an American hat. It's, it's an American hat. It's a... D- Wait. Super Dry is an American brand. It's not. It's British. It's an American it's brand. It's British, you dickhead. It's American. Search it. It's Americanized. Search it. No, it's not. It's based on... Oh, British design, spirits of Japan. So it's Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Shut up, man. Let's see, people. But I it's feel... I, I personally do feel sorry for her. I do. Yeah. Shouldn't have started pissing about. Oh, no. It's not something that you should... I don't know. F- hang on. I know a lot of people who do that type of thing. I know a lot of people personally who do that type of thing on webcams and stuff like that. And that's why I think. I'll it's tell you hard. one thing, Phil. I mean, I don't. So. No, because you've got no one to do it to. <laughs> wow. No, it's. Hang on. Ping. Shh. 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 
But no, seriously. I, I do. F- I, I feel sorry for him. I do. I would. I'd give her a fine, but I wouldn't give her a jail sentence. And I'm going to keep an eye on that story, and we'll come back to that in a few weeks. I can't believe you actually. I, yeah, if someone that if someone got hit in a car crash, like a red panda, but yeah, I'd be flipping crying. We'll get back Don't to it. Dare. We'll get back to it next week. Yeah, if it's a meerkat or a seal, it's, oh, it's only a seal. I like so. no, I like seals. They're just dickheads. <laughs> That's a fact. I like them. But Do you know what? I, I I think of a seal, and then I just automatically think of my. <laughs> just how simple they Something are. Something that flaps around. <laughs> Love yeah. you, Matty. Yeah. <laughs> you listening to um, this. I'm sorry, dude. Boy, the Mitchie is the spit the image of you. When get this, I was on, but um, at PlayStation with him last night. And he turns me. I'll be I back was, in I a was minute, mate. Cinema last night, so, so I've got two film reviews to do okay. in a bit. Yeah, he goes to me. I'll be back in a bit, mate. I'm just so. Uh, just got to look after the dog. Ooh. Yeah, I've done. Just got to look after. Hey, yeah, the floor for you. Is that the one that dropped? Yeah. Okay. Um, I said, "All right, then, mate. I'll be. I'll see you about half an hour. You know, ten, twenty minutes. Because his mum and dad had gone out, so he's looking after the dog. And look at there was the fucking dog barking his fucking head off in the background. And is it you after about six? I was going out at eight. Mm. He didn't come back on. As I'm getting ready to go out, I get a text offline, heading to pub. <laughs> I was just like." <laughs> Oh my god, are you. F- He's gone off for like half an hour and then decided to send me the text <laughs> as to what he was doing. So I'm sitting there like a dickhead waiting. In that time, I'd done two, mi- uh, two or three missions on the crew, mm. a couple of games of Battlefield, a mm. little bit of Minecraft. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, gonna, this is one last piece of American news, weird American news I want to talk about. And, um,. Uh, a, a couple by the name of Ricardo and Lisa Brown. Great first name, Ricardo. That's a crack. Yeah, do. Um, Sometimes you say it's Ricardo, but it's probably just Rich. It is. Yeah. It's like Carlos is Charles. Oh, Carl. No, it's Charles. Carl. It, the, the Spanish translation from Charles is Carlos. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying you get... Yes, some Charles. Yeah, like, hey, Carlos, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. His name's not Charles. Yeah. Oh my God. Ricardo and Lisa Brown were stunned by the letter that they got after they tried to cancel a part of their. Continue. No, hang on. I'm trying to think. Of... Ah, Update internet internet provider. Because they put cable provider, and I'm like, I'm not American, so it's internet provider. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um. Cable company by the name of Comcast. Um, if you live in America, <laughs> tell, tell us who they are for us. Please. Actually, Mike, you know. Um, God, I don't. Why do you think I'm asking people that? Are... <laughs> <laughs> well, right, let me just say, people. He's wearing an American-styled hat and with a shirt that says "American-made dry goods." <laughs> You really think I? You really think that, Mike? Spit, mate. Read the fucking label, dickhead. British design. I don't care Spit, if it's British no, design. It no. looks like an American Sp- hat. Spear is of Japan, so it can't be American. Can't be. <laughs> Elsie, Elsie, the horses have gone away. <laughs> Shut up, Mike. <laughs> oh, what the well, this, I, I think- <laughs> Oh my god. I feel sorry for this. <laughs> Elsie the horse is crying. <laughs> oh my god. I feel sorry for this couple because, like, <sighs> this is. This, this... Right, great. Great. Sorry, I forgot people, we've got a hyena on the show. <laughs> <laughs> he can't contain himself when he goes to the toilet but you know has to wear American oh clothes god. to fit in <laughs> oh my god that's class <laughs> that's by far the funniest opinion <laughs> I do one impression and it kills him <laughs> great dad isn't it <laughs> That's great. I know what to do now to render my co-host completely incomplete. Just go, oh, oh look, Elsie's on the horse. <laughs> oh, it won't work now for this time. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm 
I, you can't see how red his face is, people. It's like watching a tomato peel. <laughs> In fact, his, his flipping face is as red as his jumper. You alright now? <laughs> I, knew I knew he'd start laughing again. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. I just gotta wait. Sorry, people. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to listen to the podcast next week, folks, don't worry. I'll get a flipping some sort of sellotape to shut him up. <laughs> uh, oh. Continue. How can I continue if you're in like a such a wreck? <laughs> Just continue, man. He's still giggling. <laughs> He's still laughing. Uh, come on, serious now, come on. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Giggle head. Yeah, I'm fine. Giggle out over there. Jeez Christ. Right. Finally. He's still laughing. He's still <laughs> laughing. It's like <laughs> one little accent and then he's like. <laughs> <laughs> right. I feel sorry for this company, a uh, couple rather, because they um, they were literally just trying to save um, money as part. Money to save up for some new things and. Um, what ha- she turned down the offer because someone else had tried to come in and um, you know persuade them to buy a new deal yeah. and on the next bill that came round to their house it turns out the her husband's last name had been changed to Arsehole Brown <laughs> yeah there's the, the letter here it says Arsehole Brown I don't believe this yeah it says that Oh, you're Sorry. such a tool. Oh. Look, not take. <laughs> because it was... Just look at the picture. Top left corner. Ah. Uh. <laughs> That's great consumer service, that people. Bloody hell. Um, I'm trying to see. The company has since apologised and promised to look into the matter after repeated calls and a visit to the Comcast office by the annoyed couple still couldn't get the name changed. I think they deserve a bit more than that. I'd go for compensation if I was them. Yeah. Because, you know, now they look, like, be now they look like a joke on social media instead. <laughs> to be fair, though, you might be an asshole. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, there's no need... As someone who's in that sort of industry, you don't turn around and call a customer an asshole. You say to your colleagues, understandably, but you don't turn around, call the guy an asshole. Mm-hmm. Americans, and paper. Americans, eh? You've got no fucking manners. No Laugh way. at simple things. <laughs> I'm British, mate. British with American wannabe values. So, I'm right? going to... We're going to move on to our film reviews. And... Me and, well, i seen two films this week. Mikey's seen one. On behalf of yourself. On beha- uh, and do you know what? This is the first week I've gone to see two films and neither of them were paid. They <laughs> were both paid for. The first week you one? Uh, a friend of mine I went to cinema with yesterday. Him? Oh, I was craving the penis. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay, they No, it's just a friend. What, what did you watch? The, uh, um, no, film? I actually went to see a film by the name of Project Almanac. I've mentioned this briefly before, not on the podcast, but to you. Basically, Remember? yeah, let me get into explaining it before okay. you cut in. <laughs> okay, okay. Basically, Project Almanac is. Um, how can I start off with it? The start of the film basically finds off that a father. There's these group of students, a bunch of science students, clever students they are as well. And they. One of the, the kids finds like their dad had been working on a sort of time travel project. So what oh. they decide to do is that they decide to try and build it, build the whole thing together. So they build, they build the whole thing and it ends up working. And then obviously it, the film progresses from there. And I wanted to talk about the film because I've been looking forward, mildly looking forward to it. I've been had a little hope out for it and I thought, you know what, this could look, this looks quite decent. Looks like it quite a decent, could be a decent film. And I went in, I watched it, and I've got to be honest with you, it's the first time I've seen a a time travel film that's it's it's not got one of those things where they go all those sci-fi films where they go you're the one who's going to save us all or you're the one to so you know you know like you're the chosen one stuff like that you're the chosen one yeah yeah so well, built this together mate. yeah <laughs> they, it hasn't got that sort of thing so I liked it from the start from that yeah. point and the way they set the whole thing up is like they actually go in and explain <laughs> how a time travel could work 
and I thought, yeah, they've 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 got they go right into full detail with it. And I really like. Can you like, imagine how many scientists it actually has to get to then describe it for a couple of kids who are actors? Well, they go, they, they they explain like they go through like different motions and things for about twenty minutes explaining the sort of thing, and I think. You know, there's some people I reckon... It had me engaged because, you know, I love science. If, for people who don't like science fiction or don't like technical things like that, they might find it a bit tedious, but I really liked, liked it. Don't get me wrong, I'd love it if there was time travel because there's so much stuff I'd change. Not, but not, at the not, same time, if you damage one thing... Well, this is what they say. You change one thing, another thing... Uh, it yeah, goes and, that's, and, they, and, they actually, and they actually reiterate that. In the film, they actually say, you know, the, the, the students are well aware of what they could do if they change it. So, the leading character, David, his name is, you know, he's the one, the son of the guy who's built the time machine in the past. And he goes, I'm going to just go back in time and have a look. Like, um, do some things. Because they'd made a pact originally to say that if they're going to time travel, the whole group's going to travel rather than on their own individually. So, they're messing things up. He goes back on his own. The problems sort of begin there, but I won't. Obviously, I won't go into it. Mm. But it's it's brilliant because the way they sort of work with the film is that how can I, how can I say it in a in a way that makes sense? He he changes little things, like you know, like there's this girl he likes basically, and there's like no signals, and it, it, it's it's all on communication. Put it that way. A lack of communication because they both like each other and she's teasing him, but he's not getting hints because he's basically flipping thick in that sort of area. It's basically like me. No, and well, you haven't invented the time machine, so not like you. No, but Jeremy. That's no, right. not really. No, he's 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 one of those. He's he's really really like PhD physics smart sort of thing. Oh. No, I'm um, talking about in a flirting way. Yeah, um, no, no, no. No, <laughs> but um, they go through that okay. whole story, and I like the fact that in one 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 thing comes into the um, the equation that they don't single anyone out in this film where they go, oh yeah, well we've got to stop him from doing that because he's you know all those films they go oh he's turned evil and we've got to stop him from messing everything up and all that yeah they don't do that in this film it's like the, the you know the group of them are all still a group and they all seem like actual friends. You know, they managed to point that out in the film. They're like, oh yeah, these are a believable group of friends. And the one... F- and I sat there and I thought, I'm actually liking this film. Yeah. And it gets to a point towards the end that it's... It, let's just say the main character, David's messed up so much to a point where he's got like his board and his charts out and he's trying to scribble. It's like... Now what did I do here to mess up this thing here and then that messed up that thing and he can't remember and it's kind of, all these like simple fact of the matter is don't give your time machine to a bunch of teenagers. It's a it was well, a lot clicking in the background. Click, 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 click. <laughs> I um the PhD students, <laughs> Mr. Michael, which is Keaton. Uh, this, <laughs> this film is about an hour and a half long. There are there are parts of this film where I think you don't really need it in there. It's like there's a whole fifteen minutes in this film where he goes to like um like a festival sort of place, and it's them just doing things at the festival. And I'm thinking oh, you don't really need that in there because I know it's just to get the sponsors in, and it's at this these these sponsors have put them in there to do it and film it for a day. Mm. And um, all right, I can understand why it's there, but they could have done it in a different way. And I think that's fifteen minutes of the film that they could have, could have got rid of, and that's really the only problem with the film. Actually, I actually thoroughly enjoyed it, and Can I have the next one. What? Well, well, we're both with it. Can yeah, you yeah. not interrupt me when I'm trying to hey, sit go. down? <laughs> and you're a fucking dumbass. Sometimes, honest. You can pick that up, but um, basically, if I was to give this film a rating, I'd actually give it a good. I'd give it an eight point two. I know that's quite high. The reason why it doesn't top, um, you know, it doesn't get like a nine. Actually, I, I, 
actually let me revise that. I'll bring it down to seven point eight. And the reason why is because it doesn't do anything special. It gives it. it, it is it one of them? It, it's a film. You watch that, it. It entraps you, but it doesn't finish it off. No, it it, it answers. It has question. It ha, it still leaves. The film leaves with more questions than answers. One of those sort of films. But I did really enjoy it, and I thought. For most people, for most people who go and watch this film, they'd probably prefer to watch it, say, maybe when it comes out on DVD or when it comes out on Netflix. I enjoyed going to the cinema to watch it. And it's probably one of those films that you would enjoy more if you watched it at home, maybe, or something like that. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'd go and pay a ticket for myself because I know what I like. But for some mm. people out there, and I know, what the, you know loads of people got different film tastes, I'd say... Wait for it on Netflix or Amazon Instant Video or something like mm. something like that because you'll enjoy it watching it that way <clears throat> and it's yeah. worth it watching it that way because it'll be what like two quid three quid like that something on yeah. and you can watch it you'd prefer watching it that way rather than going to cinema to watch it yeah news. I think it's a re- I, but I really enjoyed it and I knew and I could say to Matty now on the podcast that you got it wrong me no Matty because <laughs> Matty watched the trailer and he said it looks crap. <laughs> But he was so wrong. I've noticed that about Matty. His predictions are really bad. They, they are quite bad. But I'll give him his due. He tries. Yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> so, the other film that we went to see this week. What? I have opened Open the. F- I have? Open it properly. It's just leave it like that because. Flipping stupid people who sh- partially open things. Continue. Before I throw M and M's at your face, um, um, I, Mr. Mike, I went to the pool for the first time during the day the other day, in quite a while, with this is um, to watch what was it, Kingsman, Secret Service, with Jack and Matty, mm-hmm. and I must say it lived up to the hype. It really, to me, it lived up to the hype. Okay, go on then. Ah, oh. come on then. What's your review then? Come on, let's let's hear it. Sorry for the period of quiet, people. You know, I've actually got to give it. No, give it flipping what you like about it, not the rating straight away. Do you not know how to review films? No. That's why you do them all the time. Explain the premise. Basically, it's about a kid. It involves a kid. Yeah, well, it involves a kid called Eggsy mm-hmm. and basically um, you know he gets himself into troubles and stuff like this but it goes back 17 years before the stage and it shows the character's dad dying mm-hmm. in the Middle East so it's one of them it explains sort of the premise of the story and it's one or two of the characters but then it, t- it brings us straight back to the current time and one of them is killed mm. and Lancelot yeah he's killed on a mission so and it introduces you to the villain he's played by Samuel L. Jackson do I give a shit <laughs> <laughs> um, and he basically on from there um, Eggsy gets himself in trouble and it reminds you 17 years beforehand um, the character play who plays he's played by Colin Firth yeah he got his words out <laughs> um, basically gives him like a little medallion to his mum it just says if you ever need us call the number on the back call the number on the back and use the phrase yeah. Oxford's not brogues yeah she gets arrested. He phones it. Mm-hmm. He does it. He goes, you know, and he's like, okay. And he gets released. And uh, the character is it Harry, isn't it? The one that Colin Firth plays. Yeah. Yeah. He's waiting outside for him. And basically, he explains, you know, this, this, and that. You know, he explains all the things to him. You know, what happened? You know, regarding the whole kit and caboodle. 
you know what how he knows his dad and so Eggsy decides to go into the king's room and end it but each time something else happens like they, they've got to do test and, and then it's one of them then it, it, it comes to the final test and all this and you know they've had to pick puppies through the tests you know and it's like fucking amazing it's, I'm sorry I just ruined it for everyone but never mind it is such a good film okay people let me just put it to you this way in <sighs> some in some straight way form of thing basically Eggsy is a troubled troubled youth that's the best way of putting it actually he's the protagonist of the story yeah, he is. And Samuel L. Jackson plays the antagonist, and Colin Firth plays one of the members of the Kingsmen. And how they get introduced, obviously, through the parents of Eggsy's dad and stuff. But the one thing that's kind of crucial here is that Harry take is now becomes Eggsy's mentor, and then Eggsy has to go through this training process to become the next member of the Kingsmen. Now, I won't say what happens from there on in because then it goes too far, but mm. I want to say one thing that Colin Firth is there through most of the film and, you know, he disappears at one stage and that's the, you don't see him again. Now, I want to say before that, he's got what, one thing I do like about this film when I was watching it, I loved the action scenes and it were brilliant. Mm. Don't know why, it was a different sort of take on an action sequence like a fight sequence that I've ever seen before I've not seen that type, and I did like it I think a lot of people may be a bit confused by it because they haven't seen it before that sort of thing but I really enjoyed it yeah. and I thought that's a good that's a that's a cool and he gets one hell of a badass like, like the, the last thing he does in the film is one hell of an action sequence and then he disappears from the film you don't see him after that because of reasons mm. but and then the, you know the rest of the film then falls on the new uh, the actor who plays Eggsy and he's got a great scene with Michael Caine and Michael Caine's in this as well and he's he Michael Caine part. just plays I, I thought he did a really shit part yeah he just plays the same person every time the only problem with that is because if you're going to play a character like that the only person you can hire is Michael Caine mm. and the only performance he will give is a performance like Michael Caine mm. that's not to say he's a bad actor but that's the only way you can do it but he had a good scene with Michael Caine and then it goes on and then there's the big climactic battle at the end and everything I'm personally coming into this film was looking forward to it on a fourth yeah I'd rather see this than Mordecai because Mordecai's not getting very good reviews at the minute but this has been you know reasonable scores I was my mum and dad went to watch it the week before mm. yeah and I remember and they this. highly recommend it and I, I went and watched this film I don't know where I stand with this film because I I don't know I think there are some funny bits of humour in here and in some ways I thought it was it was marketed more as a really funny film you know, all of the things that you see in it it was hilarious and I was laughing during the trailer and then coming to the film itself it was more sort of silly humour and humour now, me being me, I've never been the biggest fan of silly humour, and that stems way back with Benny Hill and all that. Mm. Some of it worked in this film. Some of it didn't work. I sat there and I watched this film, and there were some parts which I thought were brilliant. A bald dog in it. Yeah, yeah. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> there were some good bits in the film. And I was sat there, I was like, there were other bits, and one of the problems one of the problems I, I don't know why some scenes of Samuel L. Jackson were brilliant some of them we was in were terrible mm -hmm. I don't know why that was but it just you know it just seems like at some point he was just putting on a stupid accent other times when he did the accents it was funny and it was perfect for the for the part I, I don't know why you... <laughs> it was fun and it was, a good, it was a good accent but for some things that happened I mean one bit brilliant scene I've got to admit was when Colin Firth meets with him those two characters come together and he goes, What food do you want? He brings the thing out, it's a big Mac and everything. Yeah, you, know, you expect them like this, it's like dun 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 dun. Do you expect them like sort of like a severed head or you sort of like dodgy and then yeah. it's like, um, Good chips. <laughs> I'll have the big Mac. Good chips. <laughs> I thought it was the more I think about it, the more I do, I did enjoy the film. I think initially when I came out, I was like, 
Yeah, now I'm sort of now I look back on it, I think. Yeah, I did actually enjoy the film, and it did. I thought it was a good film. Did I have any problems with it? Hmm. Don't know. I just think some of the silly humour didn't work. I think the best. Not thing... on you personally, on me, Matty. Yeah, for you yeah. too. You like that? I don't. I never really have done. And I think a lot of people kind of feel the same way. The silly humour doesn't work. Mm. I mean, I know a couple of reviewers have said when the humour works, it's brilliant. But when you go into that silly Benny Hill esque type of humour, I don't like that. I think it's a bit stupid. Mm. But I did like Colin Firth. I thought he was brilliant. Every scene he was in, he was great. Really did. It. And there's some great bits of acting in here. I've got to make two commend. Is it Rose, the girl? It was. Please, Roxy. Roxy, that's the one. Roxy. She was great. I liked her. Mm. She's pretty as hell. I did like the villain. <laughs> oh, yeah. She, she was. was Bad art. I don't can't remember her name, but she was bad ass. And she's bloody good looking. And everyone loves a good looking villainess because it's like that James Bond sort of thing going on. It's like Rosamund Pike when in uh, the world's not enough. The blonde girl who goes up against Halle Berry. Oh uh, yeah. It's like that that sort of style of thing, and I like Emma that. Stone. No, that was Rosamund Pike. You asked him saying her name in the things. Ha- Emma Stone. Is it? Yeah. Huh. Oh, you bottom man. Jesus. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm going to search that while I talk about this film. Now, I, I actually... No, the more I think about it, the more I enjoyed the film. Mm. So, Mikey, what is your review then? What is your score? A good 9.3. A good 9.3. I thought we made a boundary saying that Grace is 9.9 and above. You just said, you know, 9.9 and above. Grace, I said a good. So <laughs> nine, 9 and above, you fruit. <laughs> no. no, but still, all right, for Jack's case, a great 9.3. Hmm. I loved it. I think the thing I put it down was some of the actor, or one or two characters play. But... Other than that, it was amazing. The humour was there. I liked the little bits of snottiness and stuff. And um, you know, it, it was just one of them. It's not well, there's not enough, isn't it? It's dying of a day. Mm. But, um, yeah, catch, sorry, sorry, it's interrupted. Carry on. Yeah, it, it's just one of them. It's just one of them. I loved it. I, I, I literally, if you said to me, you want to watch it again? I said, yeah. I, I literally would. Yeah, Rosamund Pike is plays Miranda Frost. Oh, Emma nice. Stone's the girl from Flipping Spider Man. Plays Gwen Stacy. What the hell have I got Emma Stone from? Emma Stone from Spider Man. Yeah. The new Spider Man, not. Mm-hmm. Where the hell the fuck have I got Emma Stone? Don't know where you got. Um, what would I give it? <clears throat> I just think that some of the silly humour let it down for me. That's the only problem I think I had with the film. And the ending, I thought the ending was a bit... Well, I'm... one thing in the ending is that I'm glad they didn't do the whole thing of where, oh, they come together and, and such and such would have been happy and proud of you and stuff like that. I'm glad they didn't do that type of ending. Mm. They did it differently. But it felt a bit abrupt. So I then thought it could have been a bit longer. Not the end, you know, after what the events of the finale and the big fight happened so quick. Well, it, it's a long fight, but then the that period from the ending fight... To the end of the film is so short. Um, but I did love the action scenes. I did love Colin Firth in this film. I thought he was brilliant. Do you know why he stood more from that? I'll give him a. I'll give the film an eight and seven point eight eight. Come eight. On, can, you, can you go for eight point five? No, I can't go any higher than that. Eight point no. two five. I can only give myself it. I can. I'd be lying otherwise if I gave it anything higher. Uh, and you know I can I can give it an eight I think eight point zero yeah yeah. So is an overall score on the S team movie review? We we'll say about what? No, we're not doing an overall. It's a good seventeen. What are you doing? Seventeen. What are you sorry? doing? We don't do that. We've never done that before. It's not a new thing. Yeah, there is. It's not. Shut it's, up, Mike. It's, new, no. it's it's an eight from me and a nine point whatever it was for me. Nine point three. Yeah. I mean, 
I liked it. But I'm just gonna go and do a couple of little things on gaming before we finish. Um, obviously, last year was the first year for 16 years. I think it's 16 years, isn't it? So a long time anyway since a certain game from a franchise didn't release a game, a new game on a console. Do you have any idea what that is? An old favourite of ours. Need for Speed. Need for Speed. EA have already come up and said that Ghost Games have done a brilliant job with the game that they created at the minute. Not releasing any details about it um, because I don't know why, they're just not. But so it's just going to the old style games. I've where no they idea. actually took their time. I don't know. That oh, was great. Two years. I suppose two years is longer than one year. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sat there and I'm thinking, I, I'm I'm looking forward to see what they come up with, but I'm not excited. I'm just waiting to see what that trailer's like first, because no trailers ever really got me for Need for Speed. Only Pro Street ever got me. Most ones have got me. No. That trailer never did. I just bought the game because I liked it. But when I, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to talk about past Need for Speed because that's a whole different world now. Yeah. But in terms of this new Need for Speed, it, I mean, if 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 EA have come out and gone, this game already looks spectacular. That could be good. It could be a good sign. But it could be a bad sign because you never know with EA. They could either create a brilliant game or a same game as they usually do. Yeah. Not really. I don't know. I mean, I'm looking forward to it, but um, tr- like you said the other day, trailer for eighty, the order eighteen eighty six has dropped this week. Um, I thought I'd talk about that because it does look like they've improved the mechanics of it. Am I getting it now? You're, you Tempted. might be getting it. Mm. Even though you'd you more tempted by that over Project Cars. The logic there, I don't understand. I'm getting Project Cars. Yeah. I told you this. No, you said you might get it. Was it Matty that I thought I said? I think that... It might have been Matty. You oh. said to me anyway, you weren't. But... Yeah. Um, well, oh, yeah, one other thing that I was going to tell you about. Tuesday. Oh, God. Um, Battlefield Hardline Open Beta Drops. So you'll be expecting me to be playing Battlefield Hardline, and I'll give people a just a, just a, an experience of what it's like when I've been playing it. Because I'll play it. I, I'm definitely. I mean, it's open beta, so anyone can go and play it. It's I the multiplayer. It. You go through the PS Store, I think, and do it through that way, or you can do it through um, Origin account, you know, for EA and stuff like that. You know, so if you've got FIFA or something, people, you can just use it that that account and log in that way. I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait because Hardline I'm kind of looking forward to. It's a game I said I'd get. Yeah. If I enjoy it in the multiplayer I'll probably get it. I don't see why not. I'll see. Well, you'll play the beta. I know for a fact you will. You'll give the beta a go. It's a fresh thing. It's you know, it's not like Battlefield of old. It's not like it's not like Battlefield's trying to compete with Call of Duty, it's trying to go in a different way. I'd like to see how they get on with that. Cops and robbers. Cops and robbers. I like that. I love that idea. I'll give you a better chance. What have you a, been doing? There's a better chance of that being a brilliant storyline than it would be if they do the same old thing of you're just a person running through. Like, you know, like ordinary battlefield games when you go on the campaign mode. You're just a soldier and you have to go through certain yeah, things. Well, I think there's a better chance of this game having a brilliant plot with line. Battlefield. Since what bad company won, you you know what your character looks like, you know what they sound like, everything like that. It wasn't until the latest one, you didn't actually see your character in the first game they've appeared in. I I, I mean I'm not going to try and talk about the past because I want to talk about see how they get on with it. I think I mean I've got good hopes for it. If I enjoy the beta, I'll get it. If I don't, I'll sit back and wait for a bit. See what happens. I really, yeah. I really do like the idea of cops versus robbers. It's about time someone's done a story with cops versus robbers, mm. proper one, because mm. I haven't seen one for years. In fact, I don't think I ever really have seen one. Cops and robbers. Driver is probably the only game original driver. Yeah, driver and driver three. No, driver and driver two. Not no, not driver. We don't talk about driver three. 
I loved it. Driver Free is not a game that's a driver game. It's a different game entirely. Understandably, but it's still yeah. It's still. A, mm, All the driver games were amazing. Well, I don't know. Drive Free wasn't a good, understandably, but they were all good games. Well, that is the end of the podcast for this week. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Well, we've been going for an hour and ten, which is the longest we've been going for for a good few months. Mm-hmm. But um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at JackCM53. You want to follow Mikey, you can follow Mikey Keating XD. If you want to follow Lewis McLaughlin, you follow him at Lewis underscore Moggy. If you want to follow Marty Morris, preferably in the street or even Tesco and Bidston Moss. Yeah, if you want to get specific like that, you can. Um, you can subscribe, you can like us on Facebook, link's in the description. And, um, yeah. So, say, it's it's goodbye from Mikey. Goodbye. And we've been the S-Team. <laughs>